Lately, Republicans have been going out of their way to broadcast to all of us just how extreme and insane, quite frankly, they are. So congressional Republicans voted against the right to an abortion, even if the overwhelming majority of Americans think that that should indeed be a right. They also voted against same-sex marriage in the House. And also, House Republicans voted against the right to contraception by an even larger margin in the year 2022. Now, if you think it's just elected GOP officials who are extreme, the base is pretty extreme too. 25% of the GOP's base opposes interracial marriage in the year 2022. We're not talking about same-sex interracial marriages. We're not talking about same-sex marriages. We're talking about interracial marriages full stop. This means that one quarter of the GOP's base is to the right of Clarence Thomas on the issue of interracial marriage, because I'm assuming that he supports it considering He's in an interracial marriage, but one quarter of the GOP's base is saying, we actually don't support that. I don't know if they're saying this should be a state's rights issue. I don't know if they're saying there should be a federal ban, but 25%, I mean, that speaks to who this base is and why the GOP is so extreme, because this is the people who they're pandering to. Now, I'm not necessarily sure if a lot of these elected officials are faking it to make it. I don't know if many of them are just extreme themselves. I'm, I'm assuming some of them are, but it's a distinction without a difference. This party is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and they can't stop revealing how insane and unhinged they are. So there's another vote that I want to talk about. So this time, most Republicans got it right, but that shouldn't really be something that they are applauded for, given that it's kind of a common sense, no-brainer type of of bill. So they voted on whether or not there should be more protections for victims of human trafficking. And looking at the tally here, yes, most of them did support this legislation. However, there were 20 holdouts. 20. Now, the names on this list are incredibly, incredibly suspicious. As The Hill reports, Representative Matt Gates was among the 20 House Republicans who voted on Tuesday against a bill that seeks to combat human trafficking. Gates, who is currently under investigation by the Department of Justice for sex trafficking allegations involving a minor, was among the Republicans who opposed the bill that aims to bolster programs including shelters, mental health care, education, and job training for victims of human trafficking. Gates was joined by GOP representatives Brian Babin, Andy Biggs, Lauren Boebert, Mo Brooks, Ken Buck, Andrew Clyde, Louis Gohmert, Paul Gosar, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Andy Harris, Jody Heiss, Thomas Massey, Tom McClintock, Mary Miller, Troy Nels, Ralph Norman, Scott Perry, Chip Roy, and Van Tyler. So let's just stop for a moment and think about the names on this list. Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene, former, possibly current QAnon subscribers. I mean, isn't that your whole project, that you're against human trafficking? Isn't the crux of QAnon this belief that Democrats are secretly human traffickers and they're drinking baby brain fluid or some shit? I mean... If human trafficking is like your core concern, why would you vote against this? Seems like a no-brainer, no? But they voted against it. Matt Gates, who is quite literally under investigation by the Department of Justice for allegedly sex trafficking a minor, is against this as well. I mean, look, if you're innocent, I don't know why you wouldn't support this, but honestly, if you're guilty, that would give you more reasons to to support this, does it not? Because you want to kind of shake off the scent, make it seem as if, no, I'm against human trafficking. Even if I'm being accused of it, I'm against it. But he's like, mm, I don't care about the optics. Unbelievable. Now, maybe it's the case that this bill is just human trafficking in name only, and, and it doesn't actually sufficiently do enough. And these members of Congress just, on principle, couldn't support it because they wanted more, but they didn't get what they asked for. So they're holding out for a better bill. Mm, no, actually, because as Matt Gates points out, he believes the legislation would serve as a backdoor loophole for illegal immigration and amnesty. Okay, so it's not necessarily that it has anything to do with sex trafficking. Sure, sure Jan. Jan. It's that it just, it preserves this like loophole that opens the door to more illegal immigration, except the 183 Republicans who supported this measure, who I'm assuming also care about illegal immigration because that's all that Republicans talk about, they didn't see that same loophole. They disagree with you. So 
That excuse isn't cutting it, especially if you're under investigation for alleged human trafficking of a minor. Now, what is in the bill in actuality? As The Hill explains, the bill calls for allocating more than $1.1 billion over five years to reapprove and bolster programs that were created under the Trafficking Victims Protection Act of 2000. According to the measure, local education agencies operating in a high-intensity sex trafficking area or a location with significant child labor trafficking would be prioritized for Frederick Douglass Human Trafficking Prevention Education Grants. Local education agencies that work with nonprofit organizations focus on human trafficking prevention education and partner with law enforcement would also be prioritized among other groups. The legislation would also reauthorize the Department of Homeland Security's Angel Watch Center, which is meant to prevent international sex tourism travel perpetrated by child sex traffickers and improve trafficking prevention education for children by including parents and law enforcement in child trafficking and online grooming prevention. Additionally, it would allocate $35 million each fiscal year for housing options that would help women live with their abusers separate themselves. So the bill to any reasonable person seems good. It seems like it does good. But Matt Gates and 20 other Republicans couldn't even support that. I mean, at least in this case, again, most Republicans supported this, but it's one of those issues where it's like, do you think that every human being should have clean drinking water. It's kind of a no-brainer, although honestly, for Republicans, they might argue no. They might side with Nestle in thinking that clean drinking water isn't a human right, so that's probably a bad example. But I mean, there are some things that are just non-negotiable in society, but Republicans prove again and again how unreasonable they are when it comes to questions of interracial marriage, the right to contraception, and protections for victims of human trafficking. Now, 20 are saying, no, we don't support this because it'll open the door to illegal immigration. Well, I mean, that's kind of weird because you all claim that Biden has open borders. All Republicans are claiming this, even if it's demonstrably untrue. But if he already has open borders, then how could you open the door to more illegal immigration if the border is already open? I mean, that's besides the point. These Republicans are fucking monsters. And even if you're being investigated for allegedly sex trafficking a minor, you still do something like this because maybe he is guilty and he's just he's brazen doubling down saying yeah this is okay this should be allowed i mean he was the one vote against sex trafficking before so i mean this shouldn't necessarily surprise us but yeah since we're talking about matt gates i've got to share this clip where uh mike pence's chief of staff on national television just crushed him on that note let me just say what everybody here knows Mike Pence will never be president. <laughs> nice guy, not a leader. Mark? Well, I don't know if Mike Pence will run for president in 2024, but I don't think Matt Gates will have an impact on that. In fact, I'd be surprised if he was still voting. It's more likely he'll be in prison for child sex trafficking by 2024. And I'm actually surprised that Florida law enforcement still allows him to speak to teenage conferences like that. So I'm not too worried about Matt Gates' things. That was absolutely brutal. Goddamn. Love to see it. Love to see Republicans fighting each other. And since we're on the subject of talking about Matt Gates' L's, earlier this week, we talked about how he body shamed a 19-year-old abortion rights activist. And um, it didn't go well for him, not only because she ended up ratioing him, but in his name, she managed to raise $300,000 for abortion rights funds. So that's the kind of week that Matt Gates is having. He continues to show his true colors, and he just, he doesn't care. I, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know what's going on with the dumb fuck caucus. That is the 20 Republicans who voted against protections for human trafficking victims. But either way, this group of Republicans, perhaps more so than any other Republicans, are a scourge on not just society, but humanity itself, because they're despicable, they are gross, I'm embarrassed that they're in Congress, and everyone else should be as well, they need to be voted out immediately, and anyone who supports these ghouls, you're also part of the problem. If you vote for Matt Gates, if you vote for Marjorie Taylor Greene, you're part of the problem too. When people tell you that they're bad people, you should believe them, and the fact that so many GOP voters support Marjorie Greene and Matt Gates and Lauren Boebert, that's tells you that they are pieces of shits as well. I oftentimes don't like to voter shame, but if you support people who are openly reprehensible, openly vile and disgusting, then that says a lot about you as well. I'm sorry it does.